G'day. Welcome to Nova Rover. We're a newly formed team from Monash University, Melbourne, Australia. Over the past year, our team has been hard at work designing two rovers, a prototype and a competition rover. The prototype was used to trial different mechanical and electrical systems, which have since been successfully implemented in a final rover. The rover's drive system uses a simple double wishbone design with dampened springs, which allows the rover to maintain maximum wheel contact with the ground, either on boulder fields or soft sand. By mounting the wheel on the wheel hubs using 3D printed wheel centers, we are able to protect the motors against any rocks or debris that rover might encounter during the competition. This year, we're employing our very own custom designed two axis holostem auger, enabling the subsurface collection of soil samples up to a depth of 20 centimeters. This allows us to medically seal cages on board the rover and then measure in situ temperature, moisture, and dielectric permittivity. Once we bring the samples back to base, we will then conduct a barrage of biochemistry analysis looking at the presence of carbohydrates, lipids, peptides and sulfates. Included in this will be a gram stain microscopy and DAPI stain solution looking at the presence of nucleic acids. So we'll be employing a Raman spectrometer, ATR, near infrared spectrometer and fluorescence microscopy to analyse the presence of any minerals that might form under fluvial conditions or biosignatures relevant to the search for life on Mars. The robotic arm is designed to provide a highly flexible and dexterous solution. Including 5 degrees of freedom, the arm can be positioned in any orientation surrounding the rover. The main lifting force in this arm comes from two independent 900 Newton linear actuators with modifiable linkages to provide trade-offs between force and joint flexibility. Worm screw gear motors are used to provide precise positioning and a continuous rotation joint allows the claw end effector to rotate infinitely. The claw end effector has been developed around a modified 5 bar linkage and allows both position and angling of the claw joint. This allows an encompassing grip on circular objects with three contact points, as well as orthogonal gripping of flat faced objects. From 30 amp per wheel peak discharge to arm actuation, Feedback from each motor was critical for monitoring power consumption, position and establishing our autonomous traversal system. Each major actuator has current sensors to provide remote feedback as well as fused voltage regulators ensuring constant power across the whole system. Our system relies on the Ubiquiti Rocket M5 which operates on a 5.8 GHz transmission as our primary communication system. This covers the 360 camera feed, system feedback and control with low latency and minimal interference. As a contingency plan, we will also be implementing a 900 MHz transmission system to be incorporated as the failsafe. We're using the robot operating system for our software suite. Uh, what this allows us to do is develop all of our programs and functions independently. Our different sub-teams can work on these by themselves and then test their programs with various inputs. For our situational awareness of the rover, we're implementing a 360 camera and an array of webcams and we're accessing these via a Unity interface. This allows us to use VR technology such as the Oculus Rift to connect to this and provide an immersive environment for the user. Our Unity interface also implements a GPS map which shows the location of the base station along with the location of the rover at any point in time. So to control our robot arm, we are implementing an inertial controller with force feedback. This will allow the robot arm and the end effector to track the pose of the operator's hand. Our autonomous navigation procedure is broken up into three layers. The highest level is an analysis of a pre-made height map of the area. We look at all of the GPS locations within the grid over the map. We look at the slopes at each point and then we generate a route between the starting point and the finish point, taking the lowest slope at any stage. Then we move to the second layer, which is the LiDAR. The LiDAR mounted to the front of the rover looks at the local geometry, looks for obstacles, rocks, hills, and if there's anything in the way, it finds a way to move around it to return to the original planned route. And for the third layer, we need to find this thing. The rover engages in a search pattern it moves around until it locates the tennis ball, and then once it has, it will maintain the position of the tennis ball within its field of view and move towards it until reaching a certain distance, at which point the rover will stop. 